Father God, we bless and worship you. We honor you this morning. Speak to us, O oh God. May none of us leave the same. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We may take our seats. Hallelujah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. God is so good. God is so kind. Today is a good and special day. Amen. A blessed day. Hallelujah. And I believe that God has a word for you here and a word for you there. And a word for you at home. And a word for you wherever you are. Amen. Today we are going to conclude with our message on what it means to be born again. What does it mean to be born again? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. So let's continue. Hallelujah. What, let's take, have a quick recap. We read from Genesis 5.3. The Bible says in Genesis 5.3, And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. But before that, the Bible says God created Adam in his own image. Now, Adam's sin, yes, so Genesis 5.1, this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Then his son Seth, after he sinned, was created in Adam's image. Hallelujah. So that clearly shows that the original plan was that we were supposed to be created in God's image and likeness. Hallelujah. Just like Genesis uh, uh, 5.1. Let's read that again. Hallelujah. In, his likeness of, in the likeness of God made he him. So that's why, and then man sinned. Once Adam sinned, everyone else was created in the image of Adam, in the likeness of Adam. It couldn't be in the image of God because God is perfect. Adam didn't sin, could not sin until he sinned. Hallelujah. Then in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, what does it say? Then it says that, put, that ye put on the new man. Is it uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, sorry. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So now, when you become a born again Christian, then you go back to the original. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we talked about all that, and we talked about the fact that the sin nature was passed down to us. Romans chapter 5, uh, we read from verse, um, we also talked about the fact that we're born in sin and iniquity. So Romans 5, let's start from verse 12. Just a quick recap. Hallelujah. Wherefore, Let's use ES, uh, NESB. Hallelujah. What's the most accurate translation of the Bible? NESB. And then after that, King James, ESV. ESV is also good. What is the most accurate literal translation of the Bible? The, yes, uh, but the, the, apart from the, 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 the Bible that is a bit clear to us, is the... Um, Interlinear. Uh, uh, let me see. I was doing a reference earlier on. Let me see if I can show you how it reads. Okay, so look at James. In fact, uh, what, what are we reading? Romans 5.12. Let's go to Romans 5.12. I, I, I want to show you how it reads in the interlinear. Then we'll continue. Romans 5.12. Bible Hub is really, really good. Amen. Okay, so Romans 5.12 says that, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. Now, let me read it in the interlinear, then we'll start again. This is, Because this just as through one man sin into the world entered, and through sin, death also thus to all men, death, passed for that all sinned. Because this is not taking the, the, the Greek to 
the English, you need to use some laws and some English rules to translate it. That's how come you're able to get NESB and the different translations. But interlinear just takes direct from Greek to English, direct from Greek to English. So it doesn't sound right in English, but it is, that's why it is the interlinear. It's just direct word for word. Hallelujah. So let's continue. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, so death spread to all men, because all sinned. Verse 13. So it means that because of Adam's sin, everybody fell into condemnation, because everyone had got the sin nature in them. That's why children, you don't teach them how to sin. Hallelujah. They sin whether or not you like it. You can teach them to do good from the beginning but they will sin. Hallelujah. Eventually. You take candy. Did you take it? No, I didn't. No, they are chewing it. They say, no, I didn't take it. <laughs> For, uh, we've all done that before as children. Phoebe is, is, is one of the captains of that. She had cookies, Oreos. And she, she ate the whole thing. She said, no, I didn't. <laughs> and she, she, I mean, she, she said, look, there is no way I have taken it. I have not taken it. Hey, I've not seen it. I've not. Meanwhile, for until the law, sin was in the world. But sin, you, ca you cannot punish someone for something that uh, you didn't tell them not to do. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, death reigned. Meaning that death was still holding people captive. Death was still punishing people. Death was still destroying people. Even though... That's what the Bible says, for until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Because the law of Moses came after what, this is, what we are talking about. Verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam unto Moses. Remember that Moses is where the law starts. So people can clearly be punished because you've been told this is the law. You disobey it, you can be punished. But even in spite of that, that, that death was still reigning from Adam to Moses. Because people were being punished. People were being paying for their sins. People uh, uh, went to hell because of that. Even over those who had not sinned in the likeness of the offense of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. Meaning that some pe people were still punished even though they did not disobey an explicit command because the law had not come yet continue verse 15 but the free gift is not like the transgression for if by the transgression of the one of the one the the many died so if because of the transgression of adam many died many entered into spiritual death how much more, much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to many. So the, the more closer it is to the Greek, the more difficult it is to understand the language. If you see, let's look at it in ESV. ESV is also the direct translation, but, but a bit more easier to take. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. So it means that if because of one man's sin, many died, then how much more through obedience will many live? Because God looks for mercy more than judgment. So if one person sinned, and because of the sin, judgment came to everyone, then how much more the superior Jesus Christ, if he obeyed, then many will have the free gift of righteousness. Continue. Verse 16. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses brought a justification. So the free gift, even though people were sinning a lot, because of Jesus Christ's obedience, many became justified. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned, the entity death reigned, death ruled over mankind because of Adam's transgression, much more, how much more, if because of Adam's transgression, death reigned, how much more 
How much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Now look at it in the uh, uh, Amplified. It, it, it goes into it in more detail. Hallelujah. Just a quick recap. For if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reigned through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Now, Amplified is also accurate. That's why if you don't read the brackets, it will be similar to the NESB and the ESV. But the brackets explains it. But the other versions add what is in the brackets. But the original translation, yeah, anyway, I'm sure you get to the message. The original translation is, is, is just as it is. Hallelujah. And that's why when you are doing a good Bible study, you also need a concordance because the, 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 the Greek word, the, the English word language is limited. So when you are translation, translating from Greek or Hebrew, you have to find a word because that word in Hebrew or Greek can mean different things, you know. That's why we have a like love, agape, filio, eros. You, you, you can't, there's no English word for all the different ones, so you just have to say love. But they mean something different. Hallelujah. Okay, so that is why, okay, so what else did we talk about? We also talked about the fact that um, when you are born again, we become adopted children of God. Hallelujah. And we read from uh, a number of verses. So I guess we'll just continue. Then the next thing is um, number two, Jesus explains why we must be born again. Amen? Amen. But before you are born again, you need to repent. A 180 degree turn. You need to repent. So, uh, someone will say 360, but it's not 360. 360, you come back to the sin. But this is the sin. This is freedom. So we need to do a 180 degree turn. A, a change of mind and heart. Repent. Hallelujah. Now Jesus explained why we must be born again. Why should we be born again? We read from John, John chapter 3 verse 3 to 7. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, He must be born again. So we explained, a quick summary, we explained that you and I were born into the world of sin, the domain of darkness. We're born, the Bible says, in iniquity did my mother uh, uh, conceive me. That's why no one can teach a child how to sin. So we're born into the world of sin, born into the world of darkness. Now, the Bible makes it very clear that flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So, flesh and blood cannot go to heaven. So, God wants us to be reborn, die in the kingdom of this world, and be reborn into a new kingdom. And this new kingdom is the kingdom of heaven. So, we die on earth, for ye are dead. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. For ye are dead, listen to it, and your life is hid in, with Christ in God. We are dead to sin, dead to this world, and we are reborn into the kingdom of heaven. Can I have an amen? amen. So we must be born again, and we must be born of water and of the Spirit. Amen. Now we are born of the Spirit, I think we explained it, the Holy Spirit is the agent of the new birth experience. And we must be born of water. It doesn't mean born of baptism. But we must be born of the washing, of the regeneration, and of the washing of water of the word. We had some verses for that. Hallelujah. 
Um, let's just get a couple of those ones. Um, look at Titus 3, 5, and then we will continue. He saved us not because of works done by, by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Did you get that? So, born of water and the Spirit. Are you, are you following me? <laughs> born of water and of the Spirit. So, it means that, born, you see, born of water and the Spirit, then we are talking about the regeneration of the washing of, the, of water and by the Spirit. So, born of water is the regeneration. Born of the Spirit. And then we talked about the fact that there's the washing of water by the word of God. So we are born of the word. That's why you cannot be born again unless you are born of Jesus Christ and born of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is the word. So you have to be born of Jesus Christ and born of the Holy Spirit before you can be born again, before you can see heaven. We talked about all that. Okay. And then... Now, let's talk about the works of the Holy Spirit in the new birth experience. We touched on some of that. Number one, the Holy Spirit is the agent of the new birth experience. Meaning that we are born again through faith in Jesus Christ by the work of the Holy Spirit. Or as the, the Holy Spirit being the agent of the new birth experience. Does that make sense? Meaning that Ezekiel, we talked about the fact that the Holy Spirit takes the heart of stone, the sinful heart, removes it and puts in a heart of flesh. If any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature, brand new person, all things are passed away, old life is passed away, old sinful nature is passed away, and behold, all things are become new, brand new. Hallelujah. So, the second thing about the Holy Spirit, what he does is found in John chapter 16, verse 7 to 11. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. So he will convict of sin righteousness and judgment you and i must be first convicted of sin for us to know that we are sinners so that we can repent and look for god so he convicts us of sin of righteousness or right standing with god and the coming judgment concerning sin now why is sin a part of the equation because they did not believe in me so anyone who does not believe in God, or in Jesus Christ rather, anyone who does not believe in Jesus Christ already has the sin nature and is in sin. I don't know if you got it. Look at verse 8 again. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. Now he explains what the sin means. Concerning sin because they did not believe in me. So anyone who does not believe in Jesus Christ is condemned of sin already. Of righteousness, uh, 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 righteousness is available because I go to the Father. So we are made righteous with God or justified because he rose from the dead and went to the Father. And of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Hallelujah. Then the Holy Spirit comes to be in our hearts and live in our hearts. And then he baptizes us and then he anoints us. Hallelujah. So we are getting to the, and then we talked about the fact that what happens to all the people who have not heard the gospel before? What happens to them? Is it fair that you've never heard the gospel before? What happens to such people? They go straight to hell. And we talked about it. Whether or not you grew up in a Christian family, it's not fair if you look at it in a different point of view. It's not fair if God did not say go into all the world and preach the gospel. 
If every Christian were to preach the gospel and to tell someone about Jesus, if every Christian all over the world were to do that, people would say it's fair because most people would have heard the gospel. But now, many people have not even heard the gospel. Where we went to in, 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 in the, 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 the place is another religion, many people have not even heard about Jesus. And it was, God saved them so easily. It's so easy because the harvest is ready. Yeah. Hallelujah. So what happens to the one who has not heard the gospel before? They will not go to heaven. And we explained it from Romans chapter 2, Romans 1 and Romans 2. Hallelujah. The Bible says that those who are without the law or who do not have the law will be judged without the law. Those who have the law will be judged by the law they have. And we know that by the law shall no flesh be justified. Because no one is righteous. No, not one. There is none who seeks to do good. So in general, there is no one who can fulfill the law. No one can fulfill all the law. So if we can't fulfill all the law, and the Bible says that there is no sin in heaven, so how will the unbeliever be regenerated? How will the unbeliever become be born of the spirit how can the unbeliever now be born into the kingdom of heaven how can the unbeliever now be created in the image and likeness of god they cannot what is going to atone for the unbeliever's sin when you and i stand before god god will say david you are guilty everyone is guilty because none were able to make it we are all guilty then the one then god will ask is there any hope for this person is there anything that can be said about the unbeliever nobody will be quiet uh, say anything silence go to hell now for david is there anything that can be said for david then the lion glory the lion of the tribe of judah will come and say i've prevailed i have shed my blood i've paid the price for him thank you enter but what happens to the one who has no cloak who has no one to send them to heaven they will still be in their sin. Did, did you understand now? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now the process now is very, very important. This is very important. Now many people feel that it is just by saying, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be the Lord of my life, I accept you as my Lord and Savior, that will make them born again. That's not what the Bible says. So anytime I'm doing the sinner's prayer, I use certain key verses according to, or certain key phrases according to Romans 10, 9, and 10. Because when you read the Bible, you will not really see, many people say it, but they don't say it the way the Bible says you to say it. And I'll give scripture for that. But let's first turn to Romans 10, 9, and 10. Hallelujah. So, what, how are you saved? Being saved is the same as being born again. How do you get saved? Nala Saki Saki. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, or that Jesus Christ is Lord, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That is where the salvation is. Not by just saying, come into my heart, come into be the Lord of my life. You have to believe that Jesus is Lord. You have to believe that he was God raised him from the dead. And then verse 10 now explains the whole process. For with the heart man believeth about Jesus being Lord and Jesus being, uh, being raised from the dead. With the heart we believe that Jesus is Lord and he was raised from the dead. And with the mouth, we confess that Jesus is Lord and was raised from the dead, and then we are saved. That's why you never catch me just saying those things and not adding this. Is that the meat? Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. What do you think? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, 
which also ye have received and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved. Did you get that? So the gospel he preached is what gives them the salvation. If ye keep, so if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye believed in vain. So we are saved by what he preached and making sure we keep that in memory. Okay. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Peter, or Cephas, then of the twelve. And after that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James and then of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. Now let's look at verse 1 to, to 3 in the NLT. Now, let me remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then and still do now. For your faith is built on the wonderful message, on this wonderful message, verse 2. And it is the good news that saves you, if you firmly believe it. Now, what is it that we are talking about? Unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. Verse 3. I pass unto you what was most important and what had also been passed unto me, that Christ died for our sins, just as the scriptures said, verse 4. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures. So, it's very important. When I'm preaching to people of different religions, I just don't want them to say, I believe in Jesus. Because many of them believe that Jesus was a prophet. We, that was debunked strongly in the crusade. That is the, it, it, that's not good enough. You must believe that he is Christ. He is God. He is Lord. And you must believe that he rose from the dead. Then when you are confessing it, then you can add the others. You can just confess these and you are saved. If you have to choose, you can confess that he, he is Lord, he rose from the dead. You are saved. But then to leave that part, and talk about the other ones. At least in Bible. <laughs> what do you think? But if you mix the two, it's, it's even super. I mean, that one, you can't go wrong. It's super duper. <laughs> Hallelujah. What do you think? Look at First John 5, 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. So, you and I are born of God or born again or saved. Now, the Bible is saying that the one who believes that Jesus is the Christ is the one born of God. Now, this is the first part, believing that he is Lord. What does it mean for someone to be the Christ? In the past, I used to feel that Jesus Christ was, the Christ was his last name. <laughs> but Christ is a title. So, Jesus, so it's actually Jesus the Christ. But we just removed that there. Jesus the Christ. Now the word Christ is the Greek Christos for the Messiah. So Jesus, you, you must believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Now, that word Messiah in the Hebrew is Mashiach. So, you and I must believe that Jesus is the Mashiach, which in English is the Messiah, which in Greek is Christos, which in English is Christ. Hallelujah. But that word Mashiach is the name for the anointed one or the king or, yes, the Messiah, the king, the anointed one. Hallelujah. Very, very important. 
So, because the Old Testament prophesied about the king, the Messiah, the anointed one. In the book of Daniel, Daniel it talks about the fact that the, the son of, he also refers to himself as the son of man because of the book of Daniel. Because in the book of Daniel, it says that the son of man shall present himself to the ancient of days. Hallelujah. So, that, so we need to make sure that we know that Jesus is that Christ who is Lord. And the Jewish people are waiting for the Christ. They are still waiting. That's, so that's why it's important to believe that he is that Christ. And he's come already. And he will come again. Hallelujah. That's why the first John 5, 1, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. The one who believes that he is that Christ, he is born of God. Acts 4.12. What do you think? As well? Amen. Neither is there salvation in any other, not in any religious leader. There is no salvation in any other. No matter the name of the person, no matter the, the, the what, even if the person is able to bring the sun down to the earth or has power, no, there's no salvation in any other. The Bible says there was silence in heaven. And the ancient of days who was sitting on the throne said, Who? There was a seal brought and there was silence and. It's like, wow, this is my goodness. Silence. Then, who is worthy to open the seal? Because no one can open the seal unless they've paid the price. And then, the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open the seal. He was, he's the only one. Only one. There is, there, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven. That's important. Because under heaven, meaning that the universe. There is no other name. Because remember that the universe, God is outside the universe. He's, I used to think that he was at the top of the universe. But he cannot be at the, on top of the universe because... There was a time that there was no universe and he created a universe. So before he created a universe, where was he? Outside. So he has to be outside his creation. Outside. Hallelujah. So he's outside the universe. So under heaven, everything, the whole universe, there is no other name given amongst men whereby we must be saved. And then John 14, 6. Jesus said boldly, no human being, no angel, no entity has been able to make this claim ever in history. Ever. Jesus said, I was talking to someone from another religion. And he said Jesus is one of the ways. Then I said, no, he cannot be one of them. Anyone who feels that Jesus is one of the ways is mistaken. Because if he's one of the ways, then I told him that, oh, you said Jesus is one of the ways. Let me tell you, if he's one of the ways, he lied. So let's move him out. So all other ways are true apart from Christianity. If he's one of the ways. Because Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now that word Father, Jesus said, is very clear that he's God. The God of the universe, his father. No one goes to the father. No one goes. No one can, can have access to him. No one comes to the father but by him. All other people are wolves. All other people are thieves. Everything else. And we must believe it in salvation. We must believe it. That Jesus Christ is the only way. And that's why the gospel must be preached. That's why the gospel must be preached, not just in one place, but everywhere. What do you think? He's the only way. So just before we start the descent, you know, like the plane. In fact, somebody in Minneapolis, somebody actually became, came to visit the church. And then I was using the example of the plane. We are now descending. 
The person's daughter was a her and her hostess. She became established into the ch the, in the church up to today because I said we are descending. Yeah, very powerful. You don't know what would, would would be the trigger to establish somebody. So we are descending. We're taking our initial descent. <laughs> Now, just quickly, the steps. So admit that you are a sinner and deserve to go to hell. We talked about some of that in Romans. Romans 6 and Romans 7, fantastic. In fact, let me just, um, no, this would take too long. But read Romans 6 and Romans 7. <clears throat> Amen. Romans, admit that you are a sinner and deserve to go to hell. Believe that Jesus is the son of God. He is God and Lord. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins and his blood was shed for your sins. His blood was shed for your sins. Believe that God raised him from the dead on the third day, after the third day. Tell Jesus that you accept his work on the cross for your sins. Tell him that you repent up for your sins and then tell him that you and, and then ask him to come into your heart and life ask him to forgive you for all your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness and then tell him from today you belong to him then stay close to Jesus pray get the word of God in what do you think now, these are important because many Christians don't know why they should be born again or wh what it means. I was talking to a lady who had been in church for a long time. And I said, how, your brother, oh, he's come, he, oh, how is he? Oh, fine. Is he born again? Yes. How do you know that he's born again? Because we grew up in a Christian home. <laughs> but... Even my children who grew up in a Christian home, grew up in church, some of them might not even be saved if you're not careful. It, 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 some, some of them can go to hell, but God forbid, if they don't know Jesus, God forbid. God forbid. You too, yeah, you also say God forbid. <laughs> John eight thirty one to 36. Then said, so now, prove, how do you prove, as we conclude, how do you prove, just two more points, how do you conclude that you are a true Christian? How do you prove it? How do you prove it? Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. So, now you believe on Jesus. What is the proof that you believe on Jesus? If he continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So, number one, continuing in his word Amen. proves that you are a true disciple. And we talked about the fact that the Christian is just a disciple of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because the Christians were, the, the believers were first called Christians at Antioch. Hallelujah. So, the truth, so knowing, continue. What does it mean to continue in the word? It means continue to have the word in you. Continue to be rich in the word. Continue to hear the word. Continue to live the word. Continue to hear the word. Continue in practicing the word. Makes you a true disciple or a true Christian. Not just believing. Not just believing. It's not of the law. James makes a clear distinction. James chapter one, uh, James chapter two, makes if you are not careful, you think that you need to work for your salvation. No, James chapter two is just explaining that true faith, true believing, is backed by action. If I believe something, I'll prove it by what I do. That's the next. If I believe in Jesus, it will be backed by action. Faith without works, action. Faith without corresponding action to back the faith is dead being alone. 
James 2.14. Okay. What doth it prove? Yeah, James 2.14. Let's use ESV. We'll go to 17. James 2.14. ESV. What good is it, my, brother, my, 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 my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can that faith save him? So there are people who have confessed Christ, they believe, but was it false faith or true faith? Because faith that does not have works. Now let's look for another translation. You see that the works is action. What other translation do you have? Dear friends, and, uh, oh no, I, I don't use Message Bible, please. Hurry up. <laughs> please, quickly, don't, don't, don't delay us. <laughs> oh, I told you to you get one with action. Okay, use, use NLT. No, I, I, uh, okay. Dear brothers and sisters, what's the use of saying you have faith if you don't prove it by your actions? That kind of faith can't save anyone. Cannot. Cannot. Verse 15. Let's stay in NLT. 15. Verse 15, please. 15. James 2, 1, 5. Suppose you see a brother or sister who needs food or clothing. And you say, well, goodbye, and God bless you. Stay warm and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, it's, it isn't enough just to have faith. Faith that doesn't show itself by good deeds is not faith at all. It is dead and useless. Was that verse 17? And it goes on. Hallelujah. Then it goes on to rehab, all those things. Okay. So we have James... And then we, we talked about the fact that we must be continuing the word. Hallelujah. And then Matthew sixteen twenty four. So it means that from now on, we must always try to live the Christian life by continuing in the word of God, by having corresponding action to prove our faith. And then the next is, then Jesus said to the disciples, if anyone wants to be my follower, you must put aside your selfish ambition, shoulder your cross, and follow me. Look at ESV for this. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Use Amplified for this and then let's continue. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to be my disciple, let him deny himself, disregard, lose sight of, and forget himself and his own interests. I'll repeat that again. If anyone desires to be my disciple, let him deny himself. What does it mean to deny yourself? It means disregard, lose sight of, and forget himself and his own interests. Did you get that? And take up his cross and follow me. Cleave steadfastly to me. Conform wholly to my example in living and if need be in dying also. Yeah. What do you think? Your life must also be directed and controlled by the word of God and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So our salvation is free. But to live the Christian life, you need to pay a price. You don't pay the price to be saved. Our ticket to heaven is a free gift by having faith in Jesus Christ. But to live the Christian life, we need to pay a series of prices. The prices don't take us to heaven. It's the faith in Jesus that takes us to heaven. But we need to pay the price of our faith by living for Jesus, by denying ourselves, taking up our crosses and following him so that we will be worthy of our salvation. What do you think?
And then John 15, 8. John chapter 15 and verse 8. My father is glorified by this. Sakai. My father is glorified by this. That ye bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. So, we've talked about the born again thing. Now that we are born again, what do we do? To prove, to prove we are his disciples, we must bear much fruit. And this is from the NESB. Okay, well, good. Amplified also says it. When you bear, produce much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified, and you show and prove yourselves to be true followers of mine. That word fruit is kapos. The concordance 2590. It's important for reference. <laughs> and that word fruit is Generally, vegetable, sometimes animal, but fruit, deed, action, result, profit, gain. So, we prove to be his disciples when we bear much fruit in our actions, our deeds. Not just actions of winning souls or of church work, but actions from the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Very important. Because you can win many souls. You can do so many things, but are the fruits of the Holy Spirit being manifest in your life? That matters. That counts. That counts. That counts. You bear much fruit. You bear much fruit. Why should it just be one when there's the fruit of the Holy Spirit? How do we know? It's both. We bear much fruit. So we prove to be his disciples. I mean, think about it. The fruit of love. You are loving. You are patient. You are kind. You are long-suffering. You are gentle. And the world sees it. And that is the proof to the world that you are his disciple. That is the proof to yourself and to everyone that we are indeed his disciples when we bear much fruit. And then as we are doing that, then you are doing the work of God. Yes. Proves it. Proves it. Proves it. Proves it. Proves it. Hallelujah. And then the final, now the, 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 We are descending the, now. We must take our seats now. To we've touched that. We have to touch down. <laughs> the seat belt must be put on. Fastened. Now, just quickly, this can be a series, but just quickly, how do you develop as a born again Christian and grow? This the growth. I mean, babies eat. Phoebe, are you eating? You still eat to live. Tete, are you eating? Can the one who is 90 years old still eat? They will need to eat. So no matter what we are, whether we are baby Christians, we are older Christians, we need to eat to grow. First Peter 2.2. 2. As newborn babes, First Peter 2.2, 2, as newborn babes, as newborn babies, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If we don't eat, we'll become malnourished. How many have seen the kids with kosher core? Very sad. We need to see some of these people. Hopefully God will help, give us a grace to also help some of these kids. Their stomachs are big. They are very thin because of because of malnourishment. Yes. Or uh, 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 is it Kenneth Copeland went to uh, Robert University and when he was there, this was a long time ago. I heard him say this. 
he was there and then God opened his eyes and he could see into people's spirits. He saw wretched, old, I mean, they were still born again Christians, but they were malnourished, they were starving, they, they, their spirits were starving, they, 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 they were wretched, they, they, they were miserable looking. But when you see them, they are normal, strong, tongue talking. But he saw a few strong giant spirits, and Robert was a tough giant. So it shows that the fact that you look good does not mean that you are growing. Does not mean that your spirit is strong and growing. As newborn babes desire, it must be a desire because that is our food. Just like a baby starts to grow, the spirit also grows. Prayer does not make you grow. And has never made anyone grow. Prayer, uh, at least in the spirit, Jude 120, it charges, it energizes, it's like a catalyst. It, it edifies, it strengthens. There's a difference between being strong and growing. But ye beloved, glory, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, building up, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. If I have to choose between the word and prayer, I'll choose the word. Because when you have the word, you pray. Because the word is, in, Jesus is inside you, you pray. But when you don't have the word and you are praying, it's also good, but it's not good enough. That's why I would love to listen. I love to worship at home with worship music. Just like in church, I just play the CD and I worship. But if I have, to, if I have a limited time and I've not got, I have to choose one, I'll choose the word. Because Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. But just make time so you can do all, because it's all important. The brain is important. The heart is important. The liver is important. The kidney is important. But some are more important than others. I was talking to two doctors, and I don't know why, but one said the heart, one said the brain. I think the brain is more important than all of the other organs. But because the brain, you can't do anything without the brain. The, the brain tells the hand, this is because of the brain. That's why a stroke, there's a bleeding in the brain, and that's why the, the brain cannot tell you to raise your hands. So... The brain is important. Now, whether it's the brain or the heart, depending on, I'm not a doctor, so someone might be able to give. But <laughs> whether it's the brain or the heart, you see that th at least the two of them are more important than the kidney. Because you can have two, you have two kidneys. So what am I saying? I'm saying that the most important is the word. Prayer is also very important. But it's easier to pray than to read the Bible. For every person. Because the word is, the, 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 that's where the meat is. But you have to just say to yourself, I am going to read my Bible and pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day. Pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. If you want to grow. If you want to grow. Hallelujah, read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, if you want to grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, we read about one of the very important things we can do with the Bible is also audio Bible. Audio Bible. Audio Bible, just, I mean... It is good, but I'm not saying that that, uh, what, what am I saying? Audio Bible is very important, but it should not take away the time one-on-one -on -one with God's way to heaven. He gave gifts to men. What are the gifts? And he gave some, uh, where is it now? So, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers now, let's, verse 12 and 13 are what we are looking for. Let's use the NLT for this. Verse 12 and 13. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. 
until we come to such unity in our faith and knowledge, unity in our faith. Not fighting, but unity in the faith. <laughs> and knowledge of God's Son. That, that is what matters, not fighting. Knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature and full grown in the Lord, measuring up to the full stature of Christ. That is what counts. That, 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 that is what counts. So you and I, our goal is to be united in the faith as far as it's concerning us. Be united. So it means that if someone is fighting me and saying negative things about me, go on. God will handle you. That's all. I'll just do what I got to do. And still love you. Knowing that God would deal with the situation. Yes. Hallelujah. You can put your hands together for the Lord. So you need a knowledge of God's son. We as Christians must learn to just say, God will handle it. And knowledge of God's son. Knowledge. I'm looking forward to talking about Jesus. We'll have a series on Jesus. Oh, man. I'll, maybe I'll even start spinning in dance as I'm talking about Jesus. Knowledge of God's son that we will be mature and full grown in the Lord measuring up to the full stature of Christ. I've not even decided to, even, I'll, I'll not even start, I'll conclude Hebrews 5, 12 to 14 and 1 Corinthians 14, but let's end with this one. The full stature, God wants us to grow. God wants us to, 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 to know him. The more we know his son, Apostle Paul said that I, hey, Apostle Paul who wrote this is that I may know him. That is more important than this person has this, this person, this, this, uh, uh, this I'm angry, this, this I'm fighting. No, 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 no. That I may know him. Whilst God in heaven is wanting us to know him, others are, this person has this, I don't have, I may know him. I may know him. The goal, our goal is to know him. How can Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the text of the New Testament, say that I may know him? And uh, if I, I'll just pass through it, or else we'll, we'll finish late. I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship, glory, <laughs> and the fellowship of his sufferings. That's why when we get to a certain point and you suffer for Christ, it, 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 is, it is so lovely. The Bible says that the apostles, after being flogged, being flogged, they left rejoicing because they were counted worthy by God to suffer shame. Oh, glory to God, to suffer shame for Christ. That I may know him. No wonder when Peter, this book, Catherine Kuman's she had a Bible, then she had this book. Fox's Book of Martyrs. When I heard it, I ordered it immediately. I didn't waste time. I didn't know. I didn't care about the price. Ordered it. Thank God it's very cheap. Fox's Book of Martyrs. Peter, it talks about the martyrs, how they were, how they were martyred apostles, the disciples, and then it goes through to Nero, Marcus Aurelius, and all the, the Colosseum, all those things that happened. Whilst Peter was going to be crucified, he said, ah, thank God I'm about to go, but I'm not worthy to be crucified the same way my Lord was crucified. So crucify me upside down. Mm. Oh, glory. That I may know him. That, that, that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. When Apostle Paul was being died, he said, look, he's about to die. He said, look, I, I fought the good fight. I've kept the faith, faith. I've finished my course. Now, so he was thinking not about the earth, but now is laid aside for me. The crown. The crowns. Crowns. Ladies and gentlemen, thank God we are born again. As a result, I can really know Christ and experience the mighty power.
power that raised him from the dead. I can learn what it means to suffer with him, sharing in his death. It, it, it's a privilege to suffer for him. We don't look for suffering. But when, we are, when, when God is merciful enough to give us the opportunity to suffer for him, even though we have to pray against it. We're not talking about suffering disease, suffering poverty, wretched. No, 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 no. Suffering, spending time suffering, whatever we go through for him. It's, it's, it's a privilege. It's an honor to suffer for him and share in his death. It doesn't mean you're going to die, but it just means understand and, and appreciate and share in how he felt. How, how it, what it cost him in his death. So that somehow I can experience the resurrection of the dead. Hallelujah. So ladies and gentlemen, let's pursue Jesus Christ. Let's pursue God. No matter what happens, let's make sure that I don't matter. Man doesn't matter. Of course, we matter in a way, but we don't. When he, in relation to God, we matter zero. Let's make sure that what matters is God. Amen. Let God be true and every man be liar. Amen. If God is happy with you, it doesn't matter what man thinks. But it's nice to have God and man be happy with you. But who oh, glory? Yea, they that shall live clue grabashi now to can the name of sticker down. Yea, they that shall live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution from the world, from Christian, everywhere they will suffer persecution. So it means that let's make it a point. I might misunderstand you. I might not even get it right because I'm human. So I might misjudge you. But God doesn't misjudge. That's why if you focus on God, me, I don't, I don't consider lose anything I've lost in this world. So far as I did it, it anytime I'm doing something, I do it for God. So I don't consider myself as a lot. I've, I've not lost anything because it was God I did it for. So anytime we do things because of God and not because of people, it will not matter. It, it won't matter. You'll be happy, you flow. It doesn't matter because the one who matters sees you. And that's, he sees all, and that's what matters. Oh, that's what matters. So let's love God. Let's pursue him. He is the one that matters. At the end of the day, when we are being judged, what do we want to hear? Let me close with this. Catherine Kuman said, I know exactly what I'm going to tell the Lord when I see him. I love that lady. If she was alive, I'm sure, uh, you know, at least I would have going to see her. I know exactly what I'm going to tell the Lord when I see him. I know exactly what I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him that I tried. I tried. I did it the best I knew how. I, I, I'm not, I wasn't perfect, but at least I did it the best way I knew how. I tried. May you and I be able to say that we tried. We did it the best we knew how. And may God tell us, thou good and faithful servant. Not out of word, just out of time. Shall we stand to our feet? And let's speak to the Lord. Let's bless his name for how good he's been. From whom all blessings flow. From whom all blessings flow. From whom all blessings flow. Oh, let's ask the Lord to be gracious unto us. The Bible says, draw near. God said, draw near unto me and I will draw near unto you. Blessed is the man and the woman whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee. Oh, how good and pleasant, how good and pleasant to be near. The nearness of myself to my God is for my good. The nearer I am to God, the better it is for me. 
God, make us close to you. Draw us near to you. Draw us near to you. We want to be close to you. I want more of you. Jesus. I want
as your Lord and Savior. You know in your heart that you are not born again. You know in your heart that you are far away from God. You know that you are in sin or you are just far away. You could be a good person. You could be someone who is a good person, but you're, 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 no matter how good you are, you cannot meet God's righteous standards. If you are someone who knows that you don't know Jesus Christ, you are not born again, you are not saved. You are still living a life without Jesus. But you want to say, I'm tired of it. I need Jesus Christ to save me. I want to be born again. I want my sins forgiven. Then I want you to just raise your hands where you are. Just raise your hands. And I want you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I confess, I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe, I believe that He died on the cross for my sins. That He died on the cross for my sins. I believe. I believe. That his blood was shed for my sins. That his blood was shed for my sins. I believe. I believe that God raised him from the dead. That God raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Please come into my heart. Please come into my heart. Please come into my life. Please come into my life. Forgive me for all my sins. Forgive me for all my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. From today I belong to Jesus Christ. From today I belong to Jesus Christ. Thank you Lord Jesus for saving me. Thank you Lord Jesus for saving me. In Jesus name I pray. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Father God we pray that you bless and you keep and you preserve those who have given their lives to you or rededicated their lives to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray that Christ Jesus will be formed in them and in their hearts. Keep them, Lord, and preserve them. In Jesus' name, amen. We may take our seats in the presence of our Mashiach, Yeshua, Jesus, our Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time to take out a good offering, pay our tithe, our first and our best. <coughs> Hallelujah. So I want us to encourage us to give out our tithe ten per, what is your tithe ten percent of your increase? Hallelujah. So give to the Lord. And those watching who were not able to come, the same. Give your tithe. Hallelujah. And God will bless you. Amen. And wherever you are, give your tithe to your church. Very important to pay your tithe. And God will rebuke the devourer and would prevent the devourer from eating your crops, from elect, uh, 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 medical bill, car breakdown. So, I mean, the devourer, those are all devourers, but God will prevent the devourer in Jesus' name. Father God, we bless our tithe. You can just raise your tithe and I'll share a word of prayer. Father God, bless our tithe in Jesus' name. Amen. 
It's now time to take our offering. If you have your offering, you can raise it also. Father God, we pray that you bless our offering. Use it to feather your kingdom. Grant us favor and multiply our offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Give and it shall come back to you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together, right? Running over there, and it will come back to you. When you give, you get to the Lord. One more time, give. to give is on the screen hallelujah it's also on the screen uh, wherever you are watching hallelujah god bless you father god bless our tithe and our offering in jesus name amen amen god bless you all who joined us online god bless you you are blessed may god bless and honor you in everything you do also not, not just those online but those in here in jesus name amen god bless you